Hello everyone, I'd like to welcome you guys to this interview that is very, very important. It's important because of our guest uh, in the house uh, and he is someone who stands out very important to our community and to this country right now. And you get to find out as we go along in the interview. And my guest today, I don't want to make any mistakes, so I'm going to read it exactly from the card he gave me, is no other person but the Honorable KC Mado, the MLA, uh, Edmonton Southwest, and Minister of Municipal Affairs. This is the way I call it, but I'm going to give him a chance to be able to tell us um, himself who he is and what he really is. So, sir. Let me start by welcoming you. Uh, you are someone that I'm very proud of, particularly very proud of, uh, because of your accomplishment. You've been able to do what a lot of people think is impossible. So for that, uh, we're really very proud of you. But in a nutshell, thank you, thank you so much. In a nutshell, who is Casey? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, thank you so much, my friend. Um, you know. As you rightly said, first and foremost, I am the member for Emerging Southwest and the Minister of Municipal Affairs for the province of Alberta. What is MLA? MLA is a member of the Legislative Assembly okay. of, of Alberta. Okay. And I have had the greatest privilege and honor um, to have been elected in, in Edmonton, a place where um, nobody thought that someone like myself you know, could be elected, they talk less of being appointed a cabinet minister. And, and by the way, for the record, I am the first African born to be appointed a cabinet minister in any provincial government in Canada. And so it is something that I am so uh, proud about, but very privileged uh, to have accomplished that. Now, Casey, for you to have accomplished this, I have a suspicion that you're not like every ordinary person. So let's try, let me, let me do a test. Tell me your story. Because if it looks to me, I want to know if your story is like every other person's story. Then we can be inspired to believe that we can get to where you got to. But let's hear your story of coming to Canada and you know, getting to where you got yeah. to now. You know, what is so pro profound about this is that I am uh, an ordinary person as you can get. I was born and raised in a rural uh, village in southeast Nigeria, uh, a place called Mbise, and grew up in, uh, with, in poverty. Uh, my parents didn't have the opportunity to go to school. Wow. You know, and so if you are out there uh, listening to me, uh, just remember that. that um, I wasn't born into wealth. In fact, we struggled while I was growing up. If we were able to meet, have two square meals a day, that is something to be proud of. Wow. And went to school, primary school, secondary school in, in, in the village. Mm -hmm. And then made my way all the way to the University of Lagos. A new immigrant. And I think for, for all of us here listening, the question has always been as to whether or not an immigrant, uh, when I talk about an immigrant, I'm talking about somebody who was not born here, but recently migrated to this country, whether we could still achieve our full potential, our God-given potential. Exactly. And my answer is yes. If you are looking for an answer to that particular question, take a look at me. Um, I came to this country in 2005. My first employment, was working at a small unit at the U of A uh, hospital called Patient Food Services, where I was making, at that point in time, it was less than the minimum wage. It was from that particular employment that I went on to work for Legal Aid Alberta and the provincial government, became a lawyer, and then set up my own law firm. Oh. So think about that. And today, um, serving as the Minister of the Crown in our province. Wow, that is that is fantastic. I thought you were like you were born into royalty and then you just got <laughs> got everything on a on a platter of gold, but hearing your story is quite encouraging. Now, what would you say 
gave you the, the the platform to be able to to do what you did? Is it is it your party? Is it your community? Is it? I just want to know what what it is that really helped you to be able to get. Like, how did you even start? How did people? Someone like you, when I mean someone like you, someone from your background who usually you would not expect you to get votes from so many other, you know, people of uh, other cultures, you know. How did it happen? You know, but it's mind-boggling. Yeah, it is mind-boggling, but it is, it is precisely the reason why I'm here to have my good friend, Tom Baggins. Okay. You know, I have always said that we are the ones to build the community and the future that we want. And I've always said that we, we as immigrants, it is very important that we take the concept of hard work. That work ethic, you know, they believe in the rule of law. You know, they believe that if you do everything right, you know, they, they, there's nothing we can't achieve. And it all begins with making sure that you volunteer in the community in your local community, in community leagues, in churches, in mosques, in temples, uh, you know, being able to participate in the political process. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, I would not have been elected if I did not get involved in politics. I would not have been nominated if I did not get involved in local politics. You know, I started attending um, conservative conventions, you know, the, the right year, the same year that I arrived in this country. You know, at a time when we will go for AGMs and conventions, and there will only be a, one or two, you know, black heads, uh, um, one, or, one or two few uh, color people, yeah, uh, at those conventions. But but you see, the Conservative Party, I believe, it's a political party with the right vision, the right values. Think about the things I have said here today. The, if you want to build a prosperous future. The, the idea of work ethic, working hard, staying out of legal trouble, you know, being law abiding, love your neighbor as you would want to love yourself, and being able to help build the type of community that you want. These are all conservative values. But also, uh, if you take a look at where we are in this country, we are, our country is now so, you know, in crisis, we play identity politics like we've never seen it before, and and I don't think that we left our various homelands to this country in order to get drawn into identity politics. We left because we want a, a good future for ourselves and our children. We want to be prosperous. We want to raise our children in safety. And we want them to be confident to pursue anything they want in life. These are core conservative values. And so it is very important that we get back to our values. Now I've always said, you know, as immigrants, our work ethic, you can't beat our work ethic. You can't. So if you level the ground, we are not afraid to compete. We are not afraid to work hard. I have, sorry to cut you, I have a problem. People of a visible minority, who a lot of times are among the immigrant population, Canada is a country of immigrants, okay? But how, what is it? What is it that is wrong? And what is it that we need to start doing right? Because we don't even, we, our, our population, like here in Toronto, uh, you're from, uh, your background is Nigeria, like you've said. And the Nigerian community, the African community, the black community, we are plenty here, thousands, tons of us. So why are we not making the impact that we're supposed to make? What's the problem? You know, that is a, a good question. But I, I think, I, I, I understand where that problem comes from. To be successful in public life, unity of purpose and vision mm -hmm. is critical. We can be running in different directions and expect us to be successful in politics or public life. Okay. That's number one. Number two, you know, sadly, our community has not been voting, we have not been voting our values. 
we have allowed the media to define how we vote rather than what I call conservatism of the heart. You know, who are we at our core? And if we are going to be successful in politics, we must never allow other political parties or the media to define or plan in our heads who we are. We must tell our own story. And who are we? We are a people that believe in hard work. We are a people that believe in our families. We are a people of faith. You know, you know, we are a people that believe in community. We still care about our children, our parents, and grandparents. That's right. And we want a prosperous country. You know, we want people to live in, 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 in prosperity. And how do you build a prosperous country if we are racking up debt and deficit? How do we build a prosperous country if we have a, 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 a government that pursues, you know, a division that wants to divide us, divide and conquer? And, you know, so my message to the community is, is that the time has come for us to vote our values and end this history of voting based on one single issue. I can say this bluntly on there, that oftentimes we've allowed immigration policies to define how we vote. When we have more than a thousand issues that have real impact on whether or not we are a stakeholder in the promise of this great country. And regardless of the government we have in place, whether it's a conservative government or a liberal government, we will always have immigration. People will always come in. Let me give you a different example. The, the immigration minister under whom we had the, the largest number of immigrants come to this country is my boss, the premier of our government, when he was immigration minister. Under his leadership, more immigrants came to Canada than any other time in our history. But the, but the liberals would want us to believe that conservatives are against immigrants. No, that is not true. That has never been true. So let me ask you this question. What is it that the, the, the community, our community stands to gain, our people of visible minority? Excuse me, what is it you think they stand to gain by voting the conservative government in? If, if they are proud that one of their own is the first African born to be appointed a cabinet minister in any of, the, any of our country's provincial government, if they are proud of that, and if they want to have more of our people across this country elected and appointed, then they should seriously consider um, voting conservative. Because I can tell you this, when I was running in Alberta, our own people told me, conservatives would never vote for you. By the way, my writer, Edmonton Southwest, is a predominantly Caucasian writer. Now, the Africans are people from different ethnic groups, you know, the Filipinos, the Indians, folks from different ethnic, uh, ethnic groups, you know, step forward and help put me over the top. But the, the narrative then was, Southwest, there isn't enough, you know, cultural people, there isn't enough black people in that constituency to help me win. But it was the same people that the liberals would want to believe that don't want us to be successful and, and, the, ones. and the ones that first and foremost helped nominate me as a candidate and helped me over the top. So conservatives really don't care about where you come from. They want everybody to be successful. They want you to be law abiding. They want you to work hard. They want you to, to assimilate into the system and be yourself. Like I, I, I've always said, and we believe this. There is somebody that we are 
Conservatives want you to be that best person that you can be. That's, that's good, that's good. Let me finally ask you, you're, you're here in Saga because of uh, Tom, um, and there's a lot of uh, people of our community here in Mississauga, um, a couple of them uh, are the ones that really dragged me to come and see. I wanted to see you, but they, 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 they managed to really convince me of the importance of coming. And I want to, through you, to be able to reach members of our community here to be able to support Tom. So what would you say in favor of Tom so that uh, people will, will come out and support him? You know, I have come to know Tom for some time now, and I can tell you that he is a great guy and will make a fantastic member of parliament. My message to them is, we can win in Mississauga Mountains. Tom can win right here. But Tom needs all of our help. If you are from the community, and I need you to understand that Tom needs your help. And we need someone who understands where we come from, someone who understands how to build bridges, work with various ethnic groups to build that future that we all want. And I am asking you to come out and door knock and make sure that you cut that particular ballot for Tom. I've heard it that, oh, we can't win here. It is the same argument that they used against me in Southwest. And I refuse to buy that. The question is whether or not we, as a community, is going to, are going to come out to support them. And it's not just our vote. We have family members. We have children, brothers and sisters, and in-laws, and parents, and grandparents. We have colleagues at work, and neighbors where we live. You know, one, that one vote can get Tom an additional five votes from the community, from the workplaces, and from the family. So I'm asking you to talk to anybody you know out there that who can vote. Tom needs your help. That's why I came all the way from Edmonton, Alberta, to, to give Tom my support. I hope you will get out there. You have between now and October 21st uh, to cast a ballot. And I hope you do that for Tom. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Casey. Guys, we've had our, our own brother, Casey Mado, Honorable Casey Mado, come all the way from Edmonton to talk to us, and there's no way we will let him down. But before he goes, you know, sometimes people get so caught up in this thing and they forget their roots. So I won't make you talk to us in the language where we go on that time. <laughs> so I'm gonna, we're going to test him. If he fails, we're not going to vote for Tom. <laughs> but if he talk to us, all our community people, you go Europe, everybody. So we'll give an opportunity to talk to us in one, two or two, one minute. So just talk to us. Maybe we know whether you'll be son of the soil. Sure. Listen, nearby, I am again a woke Kelechi Madu. I'm one of the I'm from Nigeria. I will on only see the Ministry of Municipal Affairs in Alberta. It's more the way from Alberta be here. So can I support our brother, Tom Vargas, or the next member of parliament, Maka Eban Abo, Mr. Sodo Morton. Tom Nidrain Chanile. Because I wanna what do I can make a show. Now come October 21st, nine in Chinyaraka, put your tongue in hand. You could tell me of Mongo, because every Nigerian girl is broken. Broken. Susanna is broken. You must, if you fail, you tell me Mongo for now. Make you talk to us the way we go well, understand. Well, well, brothers and sisters, uh, the thing where you we, want I, I, I won't say, <laughs> make a tell on her. Uh, say, are uh, they for, you know, Mr. Saga Mountain? Uh -huh. To to give hand uh, to my person uh, will be Tom Vargas. Uh, I, I, I I won't make that. Please uh, uh, come out. You know, and make we uh, vote for make, 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 make all of us. You know, make we vote for Tom. Uh, thank you, brothers. Thank you very much. All right, guys, we're out. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, guys. So he passed the test.